amen. I want you to turn with me tonight to the Gospel of Matthew. I wrestled and wrestled with the Lord today as what to preach. My mind has been changed two or three times, but my heart and my thoughts were directed back to this message this evening. Matthew's Gospel 26, chapter 26, and come with me please to verse 14. The Gospel of Matthew 26 and verse 14. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. You know, that's a solemn transaction, isn't it? What will ye give me? What will ye give me? And I'll betray him. I'll betray the Son of God. I'll betray the one who's come to die. I'll betray the one who has come to save. What will you give me? What are you prepared tonight, sir, to give to betray the Savior of the Savior? What are you betray but what are you willing, sir? What are you willing to take tonight? To say goodbye to the one who has come to see. What will you give me? Judas, one of the twelve. What will you give me? And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was uh, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The Master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples uh, did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. Judas was in among them now. He's sitting in among them. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Why is that must have pricked Judas' heart? Who told him? Who told him? One of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, Lord is it I. They're all inquisitive now. The twelve of them's all curious. But two men knew the answer. Two at the table knew the answer. Judas knew who it was. And Christ knew who it was. Christ knows all things, friends. And he answered and said unto, verse 23, And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. 
That's a stern warning. Better for that man if he had never been born. Judas. Judas. It would have been better for your son if he had never been born. I'm telling you, the Lord can give warnings that would send shivers down your spine. Better if he had never been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and brake and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung on him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. John's Gospel, please, just for a few moments. John's Gospel 13. John 13. Verse 21. When Jesus had thus said, He was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. And Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of him whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is, to whom I give a sup when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sup, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sup, Satan entered into him. And then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. For no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag that Jesus had sent unto him, said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that, the, that he should give something to the poor. Then, sorry, he then, having received the sup, went immediately out and it was night. You mark it. When he went out, it was night. Night. You know that the Lord will bless that reading of his own precious truth. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, he's the stern warning And Judas Iscariot tonight preaches a very solemn message. Tonight, my dear friend, Judas Iscariot is the man. He's the spotlight that shines upon tonight what I call the fearful peril of a false profession. My friend, there are people tonight who profess they're saved. And they're not saved. And Judas Iscariot tonight is a warning to those this evening. He was a man who heard the messages of Christ. 
He was a man that saw the miracles. He was a man that followed in the footsteps of Christ. And he was a man who sat at the communion table. Dangerous ground. Here's a man tonight. He's not saved. And he sits at the communion table. There are many who sit at the communion table thinking and believing they have the right to sit there because they have passed some exam, because they have done so many classes. But the Bible states it and the Bible makes it clear. Woe to the man or woman who partakes at the communion table if you're not saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 teaches us, they that eat of that bread and drink of the cup unworthily are eating and drinking damnation to their soul. Judas Iscariot is a man tonight that teaches all of us this evening the fearful peril of a false profession. Out of the twelve disciples, he would have been the last man you would have dreamt of being the betrayer. My friend, I want to bring you first and foremost tonight. First of all, very briefly, I want you to bring you tonight to the personality of Judas. Judas the betrayer. And Judas had a great knack. He had a great knack in acting the part. He had a great knack in talking the talk. He had a great art in, 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 in walking the walk. He had a great knack in blending in with the other eleven. When I talk about the personality of Judas Iscariot, I want this you to note that he tricked the saints. He hid the reality of his heart from the other eleven. He tricked the other eleven into believing he was all right. There's many like that. There's many tonight who can live their life in such a way, a man that could live their life nearly better out than some Christians do. And that's an awful thing. There's men who I know is not saved. And I'll tell you, they'll put many a Christian to shame the way they live. Would you not agree with me in that? Of course you would. And I'll tell you this, there's men who I know not saved tonight. And they'll put me to shame. But my dear unsaved friend tonight, listen to me. It's not how you live your life that's going to get you into heaven, sir. And you can run to the communion table every Sunday, whatever it is. That's not going to get you into heaven. Judas sat at the communion table. The Lord was there. But that didn't save him. Judas the Scariot, the personality of Judas the Scariot, he was the great pretender. He mixed and he mingled with the other eleven but he wasn't saved. He wasn't saved. Is this you tonight, sir? I remember 
January 2011, I conducted a two-week gospel mission for Bertie Johnson in the lifeboat in the mine. It was the opening night of that gospel mission and I preached on the woman of Samaria in John, John chapter 4. I remember saying that night in the course of the message that when the Lord Jesus spoke to the woman that by the well that day, she said to him, but I have no husband. And this is what Christ said to her. You're right. You're right. For thou hast had five husbands. And I said, listen, friend, that night, the Lord reads your heart and the Lord knows what's there. And you can't hide it. I remember that night I was shaking hands at the door. Now, this is the opening night of the mission. And this lady came out with a lovely dress. I would say she was in her 60s. Lovely dressed, a hat on, lovely handbag, and a Bible, and a Bible in her hand. And she came to me in floods, in floods, I'm telling you, in floods of tears. She says, I need to speak to you, George. I need to speak to you. Where can you, where can we go to talk? And I brought her into the wee private room at the that Bertie has there for counseling in. He says, dear, what's wrong with you? I was expecting perhaps she, her husband had died or she had a child died. You know what she says to me? She says to me, I've been caught on tonight. I've been caught on tonight. He says, what do you mean you've been caught on tonight? All these years, I have been pretending to be a Christian. And she said this, I am not saved at all. I remember I'd done another mission. That was in, later on that year, it was in Banbridge Independent Methodist Church. Another lady came to me at that mission and says, Can I talk to you, George? I says, Yes. Man, you thought she was a Christian. Wasn't a Christian at all. But I'll never forget Doreen at the lifeboat. God exposed what was really there. And that night I led her to the Lord. And just back in September she was baptized. I've been caught out tonight. I've been caught off. My dear friend tonight, listen to me. Are you really saved now? Judas played the part well. He mingled in with the other eleven. He tricked the saints. But he didn't trick the saints. The person of the personality of Judas. I want you to think about the privileges of Judas. Judas Iscariot saw everything the blessed Savior done. He was there that day when the Lord stilled the storm. He was there that day when the water was turned into wine. He was there that day when he lay, ha, laid his hand on the leper and cleansed the leper. I'll tell you, Judas Iscariot was under great privilege to see the mighty miracles and the mighty messages of the Lord Jesus Christ. A man tonight with no excuse, but a man who, believed, who, who pretended and a man who bluffed his way through. My friend need listen to me. Listen to me. You've had privileges and privileges and privileges and privileges. And 
tonight you're still in your sin. You don't have to live a wild, worldly life to be a sinner. You could be the up, most uprightest man in the kingdom of Morton. You could be the greatest church person. But my friend, the teachings of the Holy Bible, God's Word teaches us that we all have sinned. My friend, tell me. Tell me something. Is the Lord tonight scrutinizing your heart? Is He showing you tonight that you too are a pretender? There never was repentance, man. Man, Judas Iscariot, what privileges he had. Friend, tonight we read that Judas Iscariot was a man, he was a man who preached. Preached the gospel. Just because a man preaches doesn't mean the man's saved. Oh, Judas Iscariot puts the searchlight on. My dear friend tonight, as we watch Judas, and not only do we see the personality and the privileges, oh friend, if there ever was a man that should cause us to shiver tonight and to shudder, it should be Judas. One of the twelve. Oh, friend, tonight here was a man who was close to Christ during his earthly ministry. He carried the badge. He was the treasure. And I'm not getting the treasures, by the way. He was the treasure. And because he was the treasure, he would have stayed close to the Savior to communicate with the Savior. But the man wasn't saved. Judas. 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 You see, friend, I want to bring you to Matthew 7, 21, and I'm going to quote this. Now you listen to this. This is the Lord Jesus. Now you listen carefully. This may be you. Maybe you. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And this is what the Lord Jesus is going to profess unto them. I never knew you. But Lord, I preached in your name. I preached in your name, Lord. Never knew you. There were men who stand at the judgment and they preached and perhaps took missions. They were never saved. There was never repentance. Duncan Campbell. Duncan Campbell was the man that God used to bring revival to the Hebrides. And Duncan Campbell dreamed one night of a, of a vast crowd at an open air meeting. Thousands were gathered. Thousands were gathered. And Duncan Campbell in his Duncan Duncan Campbell in his dream began to make his way through the crowd in his dream. This is, and he began to see. He wants to know who this preacher is. And as he gets forward, he sees. He dreams. This is a dream. He dreams that the the preacher is the devil. And Campbell in his dream went forward, and he said to the devil, "I didn't know a boy like you would preach the gospel." Oh, I said. Oh, I. 
But he says the difference in me and you, Campbell, is you preach the gospel with the power of God. I don't. If I can get men into pulpits, the devil said, who don't preach with the power of God and preach with conviction, preach with conviction, I'll take a wee moment or two. You're all right, Jason. I'm going to tell you something now, brother. I thought that was me. <laughs> did, you, did you not see me panicking? <laughs> Woe is me as a bad example. I think I have it switched off. Nobody ring me now, please. I'm finished. Duncan Campbell, the devil said to him, as long as I can get men into pulpits and make them sound like gospel preachers, that'll be enough for me. And I'll tell you, friend, the devil has men in pulpits. And they're leading men astray. Judas was a preacher. He was a preacher. And I'm not knocking denominations, by the way. I'm not knocking denominations. But I'll tell you something now, and I'll stand and I'll prove this to you. You're looking at a man who was saved in the Church of Ireland, and God blessed the Church of Ireland. And God has his men everywhere. Boys will tell you you'll hear nothing in the church of Vernon. I'll tell you I heard enough to hear I need to be saved. And I was well saved. And I'm not here to knock denominations. Some of the Church of Ireland men, Roland Hutchison, I believe he was one of the greatest men that ever preached in this province in the, in the day that I knew. And I'll tell you, he would teach some of us Baptist boys how to preach. But God, the devil can have men in pulpits. The devil can have men in pulpit, leading men and women to hell. Oh, Judas preached. He preached. My friend tonight, listen to me. You live a good life, sir. You never smoked, you never drunk, you went to your church, you were christened, you're confirmed. Lord, 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 I was Christian. Never knew. Lord, Lord, I was confirmed. Never knew. Never knew. It would have been better if he had never been born. God speaking to somebody here. You live a moral and you live an upright life, sir. If you die in your sin, you die the way you are, Christ would have you know things have been better if you'd never been born. That good life that you live, it would be better if you'd never been born if you die the way you live. You see, the personality of Judas and the privileges of Judas, but there was the problem with Judas. Judas didn't realize what a heart that wouldn't repent would cost him. He was lost when he preached. He was lost when he saw the miracles of Christ. Judas was lost when he saw Je the, the Lord raise Lazarus from the dead. He was lost when he betrayed him. And he didn't realize it. Then tonight I, I warn you and I warn you with love. 
If you don't trust Christ tonight and you repent of your sin, I want to tell you tonight with love you're lost. You've done nobody any harm. God bless you, sir. I wish the country was full of you. But you're still lost. You're the straightest man in this country. You're the straightest woman in this country. And God bless you because I wish there was more of you. But you're still lost. You're still lost. And you need to recognize tonight the problem you're lost. In John 13 and verse 2, we read, There after supper being ended, the devil having put into heart the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him. The devil had the heart of Judas. Judas Iscariot's heart was in the hand of the devil. My dear unsafe friend, your heart tonight is in the hand of the devil. I know you've never murdered. And I know you've never perhaps lived a rough life, a good life. But you know what the Lord Jesus says? If ye are not of me, ye are of your father, the devil. Now listen, friends. Some of you knows me by now. I just preach what's in the Bible. And you need to make sure tonight you're really saved. So many are blinded tonight. Like Judas. With religious importance. There's many men important in the religious field, but they're not saved. Not saved. Tell me this. Who has your heart tonight? Has Christ got your heart of the devil? Oh, Judas. Oh, Judas. Judas, you are a warning to us all. A warning. Oh, Judas, you're a warning to us all. I'm going to finish on the punishment of Judas. When he betrayed the Lord with a kiss. Do you know what Jesus called him? Did he call him a rascal? When, this, when Judas betrayed him, did the Lord call him a betrayer? Did he call him a traitor? Do you know what the Savior called him? Friend. He says to you tonight, my blessed Savior, he says, friend, friend, don't betray me. Believe me. Are you going to betray the Lord tonight because of your pride? Are you going to betray the Lord to me because of your business? Are you going to betray the Lord tonight because you're saying you're so good you don't need to repent, you don't need to be saved? After if you had never been born. But you know, Judas, Judas realized he'd done it wrong. Here's the sad bit. Judas realized he'd done it wrong. He went back to the boils. He sat down the 30 pieces of silver, and this is what he said, I have sinned. 
and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. You see, Judas tricked the saints. He trifled with the Scriptures, and he traded the Savior. Don't you trade the Savior with anything, sir. Judas recognized what he'd done, but Judas still didn't repent. And instead of Judas going to Calvary's tree, he went to another tree. There he hung himself. And the Bible says Judas, the man who preached, the man who done wonder, Judas went to his own place. Hell. One of the twelve. Hell. Hell. Sir. Sir, listen to me. Here was a man that kissed the blessed Savior in the cheek and still went to the fires of hell. One man put it like this. I think it was W.P. Nicholson. The man who kissed the door cheek of heaven and still went to hell. Oh, Judas. Oh, Judas. You're a warning to us all. My friend tonight, Judas, one of the twelve, tonight he's in hell. He didn't come to the Christ of Calvary's cross for forgiveness. I'll tell you one thing if he did, he would have been forgiven. Didn't the Savior forgive Peter who denied him with oaths and curses? Of course he did. If Judas had her repentant, come to Christ and confess, in repentance Christ would have saved her. There's many like Judas tonight. They'll go through life. They'll hear messages like this. And they'll still go their own way. I pray tonight no one that sits in this meeting who hears this message goes their own way tonight and worse goes to their own place in eternity. My prayer is tonight come every soul by sin oppressed there is mercy with the Lord. Now let's take a wee moment now in quietness and let's still our hearts tonight. Every head bowed, please. And Lord's people, now you pray. Judas, oh Judas, a warning to us all. Friend, tonight, God commands you, sir, God commands you, dear, to repent. And to repent from a sin, perhaps, that you commit. You know the great, one of the hardest sins to repent from is the sin of believing 
that your life and the life and the way you live that life is going to get you into heaven. That's a sin. Because if you believe that good life of yours is going to save you, you are telling God that your life equals the work of Christ. And that's a, a hideous sin. We're all condemned sinners tonight. But there's many of us, thank God, have repented and we're trusting in Christ and that's all we're depending upon to get us to heaven. But what about you, sir? What about you, dear? You've heard this time and time and time again. And you'll hear it for the last time. Perhaps soon. And perhaps this night could be the very last time. Don't end like Judas. Come to the Savior. I want you to know tonight the Savior's waiting on you. Will you come? Will you allow the Lord to save you tonight, sir? What about you, dear? God is speaking. Will you open your heart's door to me? Will you make a mirror? I want you to know tonight he's here. And I urge you and I encourage you don't put this off one hour longer. Come tonight before you miss it and perhaps miss it forever. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You just take a moment now and you just think on what you've heard. You're troubled tonight and God is speaking. And you'd like to speak to me. I want you to know tonight I'm here. I'm here to listen. I'm not here to force anybody into anything. I'm here to listen. I'm here to help. And there's a little caravan outside, and if you'd like me to speak to you or listen to you, we'll slip in there where nobody else is watching. And what takes place in that caravan is confidence. I'm here to listen to you, friends. I'm here to help you. But friend, tonight, don't you waste this night. Don't shun this moment. For goodness sake, come and trust the Savior. And I pray that you'll do that. In Jesus' name, Lord.